Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. It's again a little bit of a boring day. It's actually been quite a boring range in which we have been now for a little while. And I want to fill that gap a little bit with another uh, longer term outlook first. Then we work our way down into the hourly chart. And we want to talk about the golden cross that has happened um, in Bitcoin, on Bitcoin a few days. No, I think, well, just pretty much now. Um, so we've got this golden cross. You find it all over Twitter. You find it all over, um, yeah, uh, YouTube. You know, and um, yeah, we also talk about what I think about it. But before we dive deeper into the analysis, first a few words about the sponsor of today's Bitcoin video, Chart Prime. Chart Prime is a service that provides specific trading view indicators. There are five specific and unique indicators that you can only get through Chart Prime if you sign up to one of their plans. These are based on quite complex algorithms and formulas and can be helpful in identifying trade setups, which means they can provide additional signals that could support your trading. Indicators can, for example, also be useful to support Elliott Wave counts to give more confidence. Of course, you don't need to apply Elliott Wave to use Chart Prime, and the combination of their indicators alone can provide trade setups and signals as well. They currently offer a 30% limited time discount, so if you are interested in this, check it out. Of course, bear in mind that no indicator works 100% of the time. Here's an example of the Bitcoin chart with one of the range indicators. This indicator combines various indicators in itself so you can adjust it um, to your needs, but it basically shows your range resistances, different support resistance levels based on different time frames, and it categorizes them based on their relevance. And this indicator provides you with dynamic support and resistance bands to which the price is reacting. And if you're interested in checking it out, make sure that you use the link in the video description and on their website. You can also read through testimonials and you can join their Discord community, which you can join in case you have any questions about how to use those indicators. Now, in terms of price structure here, um, we can still see here this wave one that rallied into 21, April 21. Then we came down A, overshooting B wave like many other coins did as well. Then we come down in C. The key question here is, do we come down and make another low, which is absolutely possible, absolutely realistic. And um, personally, I don't think the bear market is over yet. Yeah, that's my personal view, um, because I just think we still haven't seen the Fed pivot. And historically, what you've usually seen in the markets is when the Fed starts to reduce the rates at some point, which, okay, you know, that could be way into the future, then you normally see the markets make another low. Also, historically, markets very rarely only started to recover before a recession began, where they did often recover within a recession. Now, I don't think we have we are officially in a recession yet in the US. I know we are in a recession in the UK, but um, not in the US, at least not officially. Now, again, these are all only indicators, um, but I feel we haven't seen the capitulation yet. Does it mean I wouldn't go long? Does it mean I'm not buying Bitcoin? No, of course not. Um, I always make you and especially the channel members aware when I buy. Um, this has, you know, again, just because my personal view is we haven't seen the low yet doesn't mean that I would not take a strategic approach here and buy the dips, for example. I bought November, December lows. Yeah, I bought um, also in January on the way up and I've recently realized some profits. So don't, you know, don't certainly don't listen to anyone, including myself, who ex expresses his or her personal opinion about if the bear market low is already in or not, because anybody who's telling you anything about that is just giving their personal opinion. This doesn't help you when trading. Yeah. Um, and I'm very much conscious about that. So if I'm telling you from my personal opinion, because we cannot know by price structure yet. Yeah. If I'm telling you, I don't think the low is in then I will eventually still expect another low. I expect it. Does it mean that I don't prepare for the other case? No, of course not. And that's all what you need to do. You need to be, you need to be able to prepare for the different scenarios. And, you know, we want to wait for confirmation. Nobody knows at this stage if the bear market has already been, the bear market low has already been made in November or not. And I want to be objective. Yeah, I'm not biased. I want to be objective. I want to give you only the confirmation that the bear market has ended when we know by looking at the price structure and when probabilities 
significantly increase. They haven't increased yet for the bull market. And that's also always try to give you that um, comparison to end of 2021 when we peaked at 69K. And I also at the time personally thought we could go higher and we might maybe go to 100K. But price structure suggested from the moment we drop below 58k that we will see a drop below 29k and that's what I made you aware of and irrespective of my personal opinion which I don't always trade to yeah I'm trading from what I see in the charts live in the present trade in the present yeah I can think whatever yeah but the market might do something different we can always only look at the chart and look at the structure that's what you can trade not my opinion. Don't trade my opinion. Don't trade the counts. Trade the support and resistance areas that we identify by using Fibonacci levels based on the Elliott Wave count. I hope that is clear and I really try to make that a theme over the last few days and weeks because a lot of Elliott Wave analysts don't talk about that. They don't talk about how this should be traded, this stuff. And it leaves a lot of people confused. You know, a lot of people say, all right, you've got this wave one to the upside or whatever. I'm just going to go long now. Whereas that's not the right way to do. You need to identify the key turnaround points, the pivot points, decision points. And if you have two conflicting counts, I mean, even here, there is, of course, a bullish count for the beginning of the bull market and the bearish count still. But how do you know which one to trade? You don't, right? It's luck. It's gambling. So you don't want to gamble. You want to identify within those counts the low risk, high reward setups. And you don't really care about which count you're trading. You count the uh, you trade the count where you currently have a trade setup and then you have a low risk high reward setup that's how to do it you know and not by looking into the um the crystal ball which doesn't exist because uh, someone said it if you go by the crystal ball you will eat shattered glass in the end okay and that's the only way how professional technical analysis can work out you know not by trying to read the stars or something because that does not work okay it's wishful thinking doesn't exist it's a lie okay so that we've cleared that up and i always bring need to bring it up because we have so many new viewers and you know and uh, we need to hammer it in <laughs> okay so looking at this uh, we're obviously now in the wave two that might be over yeah it might have finished in november um it might come down again and again personal opinion we will see another low but price structure is currently going up but we have no evidence that the bear market low has been struck because of the high, you know, a C wave consists of five waves. So we've got these five waves down here, um, possibly done. You know, po possibly we finished this in November. And you could say, okay, we have here the wave two. I've only called, called it alternative wave two because my alternate, the alternative count, um, or the, let's say the second scenario. But probability for that is is okay. You know, it's it's you know there is a decent probability that the bear market low um, finished. Okay, um, or the bear market low has been made in November. But this could still be with a high likelihood a flat pattern. So in the bullish count, I would say we had a wave four here, and this was a wave five of a wave two, and now we are rallying in a wave three, yeah, um, like this. But the daily trend hasn't shifted. We haven't even made a new high. We haven't even gone above the August high. Now, even if we go above the August high, it still wouldn't change anything. So this could easily be an A wave, a B wave, and we now rally up in a C wave. The C wave can be a five wave move. One, two, three, four, five. We haven't in, even seen waves four and five yet, yeah, at least not clearly. So I don't even have that condition fulfilled. But even with that condition fulfilled, it is just this larger three wave move, which could just be a higher degree wave four, and we could still make another low in a wave five and reset lower. Very likely still, very likely. Does it mean you need to wait for the low? Absolutely not, yeah. Have a strategic approach. I always made you and also channel members aware when I bought in um, throughout the bear market, yeah. Um, so it, you, shouldn't always, you shouldn't wait for the lowest low. That's not necessarily best, but in the end only you can decide that, okay? Um, now I'm not giving you financial advice, of course, you know, because everybody's in an individual situation. Okay, so what are the confirmation levels that we need, therefore, that a bear market low has been made in November? We need to see those five waves up 
And, you know, maybe we've seen that already. There's a way to count it that we say, okay, we've seen the five waves up, fine. But even if it has done that, what we need to see, this is only the first level of confirm confirmation as per Elliott wave that a trend is shifting, yeah, because it could still be an ABC bearish. So the five waves up in themselves don't help us. What we need is to see that if this finishes off as a wave one, a five wave move in a wave one, which is bullish, then I need the confirmation by holding a wave too low. So we make those five up and then three waves down, hold a higher low in a wave two. This is the second confirmation as per Elliott wave um, that the trend is shifting. And then you ideally also need a break above the wave one high to confirm, possibly here in an inverse head and shoulders. Do, does it mean you need to wait until the breakout? No, if you're a breakout trader, maybe, but the way to trade it ideally, in my opinion, is to scale in the wave two wait for that wave too um but again it, it's too simple it, it, it's you know it's more complex than that you know I, I don't tell anyone because that's often misunderstood i don't tell anyone wait for your wave two because the wave two could be shallow the wave one can rally to maybe 28 29k so again it's all strategic right if anybody has no bitcoin ethereum position by all means you know if you don't have any skin in the game maybe get a little bit but you, only you can decide that. We are still very early. Nobody has missed anything. So um, that's sort of what we need. Yeah, we need the wave, f the five waves up and the three waves down. And we haven't really seen the five waves up yet. And if you look at this in terms of um, retracements, I mean, if we say the wave two was here back in March and you measure all the way down to the third wave, this fourth wave, which we possibly have, which would be bearish, really has only reached the 23.6 FIP level now. It hasn't even reached a 38.2 at 29.4K, which would be the ideal scenario for a wave four. So yeah, just by how high something goes, we're not, you know, we won't be able to differentiate between the bullish and the bearish count. It's the structure we need to see, five up and three down. Good, so hopefully that was useful. I'll put that video into the long-term videos. Um, now, if we look at the one hour chart now, we can see that we are still hovering here in the sideways range. Movement to the downside unchanged from the previous video. I made you aware that we could be earlier in the video today that we could be working here on an Elliott wave triangle that we might see a lower high and a higher low. And that's exactly what we see now. Does it mean it has to play out in a fifth wave down? No, but likelihood would currently suggest it that we continue the path down in blue. This is the blue wave count. This is the bearish count um, that we've had here. One, two, three. Four, five. The wave three is a bit too short for my, in my opinion. Um, but let's see what, let's see how this plays out. Yeah, I mean we are hovering below support. This was the um, previous support that we identified. Until we broke below it, probabilities were still quite decent for a move up, for an extension of this third wave. But uh, and it's still technically possible because we have not taken out the twenty-two point five k level which is possibly the beginning of that wave one, of that larger wave three, okay? Uh, beginning of the wave five of three. Um, but we have come dangerously close and this normally is a sign that this is going to come down. But Bitcoin could still squeeze in another rally at this stage, but it's not likely anymore. So we are in a, in a messy situation where the uptrend is not very likely anymore, but Bitcoin hasn't come down enough to invalidate the uptrend count. So we, we need to watch this sideways movement uh, squeezed between channel support and resistance. Ethereum's, Ethereum looks much more promising in terms of having the chance to put one more high in, but Bitcoin, not really, okay? So this could very well be a triangle which could be finished and we need to be ready for a move down um, in a fifth wave. However, if it breaks above that A wave high at 23,160, we're breaking out the tri out of the triangle range and it could be that we put a bit more of a higher move in, yeah? Um, we also have resistance here, FIP resistance, which Bitcoin is now in a situation where um, if it is going to put in another high, it first has a lot of FIP resistances to run through. This goes all the way up to around about 23,920 at the moment, yeah? the 78.6 FIP. If it goes above that, then again, it would shift the probabilities towards further upside. But until then, it's not in a really good position to, you know, to really um, yeah, give us a clue that it might really higher because the move down looks very, starts to look very impulsive. 
in contrast to what Ethereum is doing. And that's interesting. You know, they, they normally move together, but not always. So it's it's interesting observing that. Uh, next, yeah, reliable trade setup for me would be, a, you know, a finding support in the wave four to rally up in the wave five and to trade the fifth wave. Until then, we are in a messy range. And if you want to take, I mean, there are thousands of strategies how you can trade this. But, um, you know, I'm giving you here the, what I believe are the high probability ones. So um, since we lost that support, I also lost a bit of confidence in, in the subtrend. Now, the advantage of trading it still is that you can set the stop loss quite tight. And, um, you know, you, you might get a, call it high reward, low risk trade out of this. But if you trade this long now, expect some headwinds. So I also wanted to talk about the golden cross. So the golden cross is something that doesn't happen every day. Uh, it is uh, taking place when the 50 day moving average, which you can see here as a white line is crossing above the yellow line, which is the 200 day moving average. Mm, it's not too reliable um, in the history of Bitcoin. It hasn't been too reliable, but so far there have been eight golden crosses on the Bitcoin chart um, in its history um three of them um the uh, well quite mixed actually three of them were quite on point and they were actually predicting at least a year-long bull market for example oops for example the one here in d -d 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 may 22 yeah so it's pretty much on point and uh, predicted predicted a bull market However, then you had golden crosses, for example, let's say the one here. No, yeah, okay, let me see. Just want to, um, just need to make sure I get the right one here, which I wanted to show you. Um, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, we had a golden cross here, it's for example, in February 22. Uh, yeah, February 2020, which was a golden cross down here. Now I zoom in a little bit. We had a golden cross, but this, but the price crashed after that very, very violently, actually. Um, then, however, that golden cross worked again. So it's not entirely, yeah, the, this, it, it's something that doesn't work 100% of the time, okay? So you get these occasional bull traps. And also, I think we had one in 2014. I looked them all up earlier which also wasn't really uh, spot on. So for example here, yeah, you also had a similar situation where you had a golden cross here um, and I don't even have it all on the chart is because this is not the entire Bitcoin chart here on Coinbase, but you had a golden cross here also crashed quite violently afterwards. So these can give you very, very much for signals as well. Just be aware of that. And therefore I'm not really a fan of the golden cross theory here. Um, because it can give you wrong signals, okay? F again, three of them were on point, but in total we had eight golden crosses. So yeah, I'll leave that with you. So just because we have a golden cross also does not really give more confirmation or more probability to a possible bull run because we are still in the range and we haven't broken out and we are squeezed between support and resistance at this stage. But yeah, that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.